Hi, welcome to GRVO TV, G's Reviews, Views and Opinions. This is the next video in my series regarding uh, watches that you can buy for less than a tank of gas. Now that's mostly going to be new watches, but I might include some second-hand ones if I can get some deals. These are going to be watch brands which have some sort of heritage. So, you know, we're going to be talking budget brands as such, like Casio, but still make high quality watches with good heritage, um, Timex, Seiko, Citizen, those kind of brands. But all the watches I buy are gonna be watches that I want for specific reasons, might be like a dress watch or a, or a beta watch or uh, a timing watch, um, a beta beta watch, um, you know, all, so they've all got to have some kind of purpose for me. Um, I will be wearing them all, so I'm going to do this initial review and then you'll get a long-term review. I'm going to do the review more about my feelings on the watch, uh, how it feels, how it wears, whether it's as good after a few weeks as when I bought it and things like that. So it's not just going to be a list of specs. I will give some specs as I go along, but it's mostly going to be about my opinions of the watch. Is it good value for money um, or, or is it just trash? So um, the watch we're reviewing today is a Casio, um, it's a G-Shock and it's the GW5610. I'll put a link in the description to Amazon if you want to go and buy one. I have set up an affiliate links program thing so if you click on that I think I get a little bit of money. I've, it, I've never done it before so I don't really know how it all works but um, there is a link in the description if you want to buy this watch and I will caveat that by saying I will only put links in description of watches that I would recommend to a friend. If I don't think it's a good watch, I won't put a link to it. I'll still review it and I'll tell you what I think, but I won't put a link to it and I, I won't recommend you buy it. If you want to go and buy it off your own back, that's entirely up to you, obviously. So I wanted a, a G-Shock um, because I bought actually a just a normal sort of world time Casio, which was this orange thing, just a little cheapy, quite liked it. Uh, but then I thought, actually, no, I, I quite like a G-Shock. And I actually gone for the... Um, the, the 5600 range because I like the size nice and small on the wrist quite flat really comfortable really durable the straps fine I've got a problem with it I'm not going to change the strap out on this but um, the features I liked on this was that it's solar powered so it's going to last pretty much forever and it's uh, one that's linked to the atomic clock now in, in the UK the atomic clock is still working and this picks up at one o'clock every night it has about six attempts and usually by attempt two it's picked up the time so it's deadly accurate and then I can kind of set my other watches by this watch so that's why I've gone for this one there is there are cheaper versions this one's just under about 100 pounds there are cheaper versions that don't have the atomic and don't have the solar I've got one here which is the blacked out version which I really like it's my stealthy one but that hasn't got the solar hasn't got the um atomic clock function but they're still deadly accurate and the batteries last for years in these anyway and they're easy to swap out so it, it's no big deal but I did I did want that and with that solar thing comes um, some interesting I don't know if they're called features or what but when you look at the screen it kind of you've got like a sheen where it's obviously slightly different to a normal Casio that hasn't got solar so you get like this kind of different look to it and I, I actually quite like that and you can actually see the solar panels around the edge of the screen and so it, it's just a nice feature so um, the watch itself it's it weighs virtually nothing I mean it's not even worth mentioning the weight of it there's no weight in it at all it's just got a screw four screws to screw in the back but it has got a, a slightly more detailed back than your standard sort of 5600 model um, which is quite nice it just differentiates it a little bit it's a little bit nicer you can swap out and buy adapters for the straps but the strap that's with it it's supple it's comfortable it works absolutely fine it's durable obviously it's a g-shock so it's going to last you can bash these around they've got good protection for the glass so you know you'd have a job to actually scratch one of them the buttons are quite nice to press and there's a bit of a technique with these buttons in that there's a, like a lump the opposite side so you, you press the button and hold the lump on the opposite side 
of the, the bezel kind of thing. So if I want to do the light, for instance, I put my thumb there, touch the light, and it, it's nice and easy. There's a mode button here, so I hold my finger there, and I can press that um, mode button and cycle through the modes um, quite easily. They're not so easy that you um, press these buttons by mistake, and they're not so hard that it's a nightmare to use them. The other thing I really like about this watch, which I didn't even know until I'd actually got it, <clears throat> was it has the auto light function, so that when you tilt it on your wrist, you tilt it to look at it, if it's dark, the light will come on automatically, and you, you can switch that off if you want, and I've actually heard someone say, oh, they didn't want that on because it come on too often, and they didn't want to run the battery. Well, it's solar. It's a solar watch, so it's never going to run flat anyway. Um, with regards to the solar and the charging and the battery, I've had this for a while now. When I got it, it was in the tin and it was on medium. And it's been on medium ever since. So we've had a, about 20 minutes of sunshine since Christmas, since I've had this watch. And um, it's still on medium. Every now and again, it moves on to high, so it's sort of on the cusp. But it's never gone on to low. It's never run out. It's never stopped doing anything. It's got all different features whereby it kind of shuts itself down. So for periods of inactivity in the dark, it will um, shut the screen off to save battery um, and save power, which is good. And as soon as you touch it or you know move it around or expose it to light, you kind of wake it up, which is a really good feature. Um, and again, that's called the PS, the power saving mode, and you can turn that off and on. Um, so it's not something you have to have if you don't want it, but I just leave it on and it, it it works fine. Quite often you go into the box and look at it and it'll be just a blank screen. You touch it and it just wakes up. Quite a nice feature, I think. But this has come my sort of night watch because it's the one that automatically the backlight comes on when you when you twist it. And I really like that feature. It's got your world times, your five alarms, uh, countdown timer, which is important to me. Um, all your, your normal Casio features that you would expect on a G-Shock. Um, you've got the, the time, the date, the day, all on the screen, on the front screen. You've got uh, little indicators to your alarm and signal status and whether or not you've received a notification for the atomic clock to update it and it's showing there that it's received. And then if you press the button, it will show you that it was last received um, yesterday at, or actually this morning at three minutes past one. Um, so you know that it's as accurate as it can be, this watch. Um, what else? Uh, you got uh, an hourly chime and things like that, uh, which just went off um, right on cue. And I've uh, got a couple of watches and it's just done it on a few of them. Um, so that, yeah, that again is switchable on and off. Um, so yeah, really nice, really nice watch. I'm really liking it. Um, I've been wearing it quite a lot, and it's it's kind of my go-to um, everyday watch. Um, you know, it's I can't think of an occasion when you really wouldn't. It's not the ideal dress watch, I don't think, unless you wanted it as a bit of a talking piece. I suppose I've got other watches that will do that, but it is just a nice everyday watch. It would make a great beta watch. I think if you wanted it as a real what I call a beta beta, where it's going to get bashed about a lot, then maybe go for the non-atomic, non-solar version, the cheaper one. Uh, oh, the light on it is really good. It lights up the whole display. Um, I'll put up a shot of that. Uh, looks really good. Very clear and easy to see. I think that's quite important. Um, and the thing for me is just the comfort on the wrist. It's just a, such a nice, comfortable, lightweight watch. You kind of you put it on. It will go under a cuff. You can just forget you're wearing it. Um, and it's nice, but you've still got that element of it. it's a bit of a talking piece if you want to bore someone to death with the fact that it's, you know, synced to the atomic clock and it's solar powered and all that kind of stuff. So overall, I'm really loving this one. Uh, as I've said before, with all these watches, I'm not planning on selling any of these watches unless I just don't like them for any reason. So I will know straight away whether I'm going to keep them or not or whether there's a major problem after wearing it for a little while. Um, maybe if it's replaced by something similar, I might sell it then, but I'm, that's not the plan. This collection isn't to make money or anything. It's just um, it, it's a collection that I'm going to build up. So I'm not worried if I have 12 watches or 50 watches in the collection. It, it's not going to matter to me. Um, and I'll just rotate and wear them as and when. You know, I, I could have 365 and wear a different watch every day, couldn't I, eventually? But at the moment, we're a very small collection. But um, I've got 
got a couple more of watches on the way which will be in i've still got plenty to, to review so um, and it, it's just a really interesting little hobby so um what else to say about it i don't think there is any oh negatives let's do negatives about this watch well i suppose the one negative would be that it's it's price it's it's let's have a quick look at the price at the moment Right, so around £93, between £93 and £100 at the moment. So, yeah, new from £93.65. So about, about you know, under £100, so we're still within my uh, less than a tank of gas budget, but it's right up to the limit on that. And so I suppose that's the only thing. I still think it's good value for money for the watch, uh, for a watch that will potentially, you know, will last for 10, 15 years. I think it's great value got no issues with it whatsoever and um, so that could be a negative is the price you can get the I say the non-atomic the non-solar ones for about half that price if you want a real beta beta and um, they're going to be really good value for money so that's the first negative um, other negatives whilst I don't have a problem with the buttons I could see that some people might go mm, they're a little bit they're not the easiest thing, but it's kind of a bit of a technique you have to get used to. You could use your finger now, but I find that a bit fiddly. Um, so I could I could see why some people might struggle with the buttons. Personally, I don't, but I could say that's a bit of a negative. Some people say the straps aren't very good, but I, I can't fault it. It's rubber, it's obviously waterproof. If you get sun cream on it, it's gonna be fine. Um, they're durable. I've never had one come off or you know they do perish after about 10 years they will start to maybe eight years they will start to perish and they might crack in which case you'll need to replace it but that's not the end of the world <clears throat> other negatives um the alarm's not very loud on it um that's probably my biggest bugbear of it especially if it my night watch would tend to be my alarm watch but the alarm isn't that loud on it it's okay but if you've got your hand under your pillow or something you won't hear it um so that that could be a little bit of a negative but you know it's I'm, I'm really sort of nitpicking about it now so as i say um at the moment so i will do a long-term review on it but at the moment i'm absolutely loving it um i can't i can't see any reason why i'd get rid of it i would 100 percent recommend it and um it, you, you certainly won't be disappointed if you decided to sell it you can i think i actually got this one second hand and i paid I, think I paid sixty pound for it or fifty pound for it. So, and this was when I say second hand, it was second hand but brand new in the box, like worn once or something. So, if you don't want to spend the ninety odd pound on a new one, um, then you know have a look at the second hand market. Do some checks to make sure you're not buying a fake one. So there you go. That's my review on the um, the Casio uh, GW fifty six ten. Um, uh, watch this space. Uh, I've got um, plenty of reviews coming up on uh, my other watches here, but for now, I'll see you soon. Cheers, bye.